Since the end of World War II, six submarines have gone missing, lost at sea with all hands. Five can be explained, but the sixth, K129, is still a mystery. This was the start of a Black Ops covert operation that could bring the world superpowers to the brink of war. Here, in the Dark Lounge, we discuss what might have happened. It was a cold morning and the freshness of the air felt good as Captain First Rank Vladimir Ivanovich Kobzar looked back at the Rabachi naval base for the last time before descending into his submarine. The last 70-day ballistic test combat patrol had gone to plan perfectly and the captain felt confident the next exercise would push his team, but they would handle it in their stride, as Russian precision and care for duty always did. After all, the K129 was one of the latest diesel electric golf class strategic ballistic missile submarines, and was key in the protection of the Soviet state with its deadly weapon system. This was the third patrol for K129, with an estimated return to the port of the 5th of May, 1968. Today was the 24th of February. One month later, after missing two radio check-ins, Soviet naval headquarters would declare K129 as missing. After being declared missing, Rear Admiral Rudolf A. Golosov immediately ordered an air, surface and subsurface search and rescue mission in the North Pacific. K129 had to be found and recovered. With such a large-scale Soviet naval deployment, over 36 vessels and 50 planes deployed, US intelligence was alerted. What were the Russians looking for? After World War II, and experiencing the deadly effects of the German U-boats, the US Navy had formed the Committee for Undersea Warfare. Its mission? To research anti-submarine warfare, and more importantly, to track and triangulate the position of enemy submarines. This highly classified sound surveillance system, SOSUS, consisted of a chain of bottom-mounted hydrophones which could detect acoustic power systems or a single powerful anomaly. The Soviets could not locate K129 and considered it lost to the deepest of oceans, safe in a watery grave that no human could reach. The Soviet fleet would return to their base. However, using the top secret SOSA system, the US Navy identified a single acoustic event, an explosion or implosion, around 40 north, 180 longitude. K129 was approximately 750 miles northwest of Pearl Harbor Naval Base. Over the next months, USS Halibut, with its deep submergent search equipment, would dive to nearly 5,000 metres to survey the wreck of K129. With the Russians having no knowledge that the submarine was found, an idea developed in the highest levels of the US government. Could this be a chance to recover three Soviet SSN-5 Serb nuclear missiles? Aboard the sunken vessel, would the operation manuals and code books still be viable for analysis? Could this be a chance to study in depth the latest Soviet submarine and missile technology with their oldest adversary, none the wiser? The White House agreed it was too good an opportunity to miss, and so began the largest clandestine black op in ocean warfare, Project Azorian. In the next few months, the CIA and National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger 
would meet to discuss how to implement such an outlandish plan to recover the wreckage. With the Russians monitoring all military ship movements in the area, a new idea would be needed. Something the Russians would not expect. Global Marine Development Incorporated was tasked with designing and building the vehicle to recover K129 by exploiting the billionaire businessman Howard Hughes as a cover for the project. The Hughes Gloma Explorer was built. It would need to operate beyond the depth of any salvage mission attempt before. The mission? To lift a 1,750 tonne, 132 foot long submarine intact from three miles under the sea, in total secrecy. The weather conditions were not perfect when, in 1974, the mechanical claw aboard the Hughes Glomer Explorer began to pull K129 from the seabed. The powerful twin-shaft motor winch slowly turned and inch by inch the submarine crept towards the surface. Sweat formed on the brow of the lead engineer when, at two miles into the climb, a judder was felt, stopping everything. The team waited. Could the mechanical claw keep hold of its prize? Over a mile underwater, the sound was deafening. Metal tore and bolts disintegrated as the weight of the submarine caused the structure to buckle. The front and rear sections of K129 could be held no longer and ripped apart, disappearing once again into the murky depths. However, the mechanical claw still held in its grasp its prize. The centre section, which held the three nuclear-tipped missiles, and the main control room where a series of cryptographic machines and operational manuals may be found. Solemnly, six Soviet submariner bodies were also recovered. As the vessel was pulled through the moon pool into the centre of the ship, hidden from sight, the crew congratulated each other. The mission had succeeded. No one knew. Inside the CIA and NSA, there was a leak. The Russians had found something. Soviet Ambassador Anatoly Dobrynin warned the Soviet High Command that the Americans had not only found K-129, but were trying to recover it. Due to the depth of the ocean where the wreckage should be, the Russians dismissed the idea. But, behind the scenes, a new order was issued to re-evaluate the situation. At such depths, how could the Americans recover the submarine? It seemed impossible. But with no idea where the submarine was, how could they stop the Americans? Prior to the sinking, was K129 discovered and the USS Swordfish sent to intercept as a warning to the submarine from coming too close to such an important military base? Did a last minute aggressive manoeuvre cause the subs to collide, sending one to a watery end? Such an incident, if proven, could cause major complications for the US government so soon after the Cuban crisis. Did the Russians later retaliate with the sinking of USS Scorpion when investigating a Soviet flotilla in the same year? This was never confirmed. K-129 went dark and was not missed for two weeks before the Russians advised the vessel was missing. Was its mission to try and lay a Russian underwater monitoring system? Did the submarine subsequently suffer a major power failure and implode under the extreme pressures? Or did K129 or someone on board have their own mission? Something darker, something that no one in either superpower knew. 
The six bodies recovered from the wreck had to be buried at sea due to radioactive contamination. How did they get exposed to so much radiation from an electric diesel submarine? The only radiation on board that could have affected them would have had to escape from one of the three nuclear-tipped missiles. It is noted that K129 had an official personnel of 82. However, 98 people were confirmed by the Russians as lost in the tragedy. Who were the extra 15 personnel on board K129 at the time of its sinking? Was this actually a case of a rogue submarine about to fire a nuclear weapon on a US military base? Did a mutiny occur with the possibility of World War III as the outcome? Were the extra personnel on the already cramped submarine set on starting a war with America? Was this revenge for the Cuba crisis, which many in Mother Russia had considered an embarrassing concession on a global scale? Did a fight ensue on board the ship with these valiant seamen having to sacrifice themselves to stop Armageddon? Or did one of the SSN6 missiles explode in the launch tube, causing radiation to leak and a loss of control, sending the ship to the bottom of the ocean? Why did the CIA invest so much time and money in the recovery of K129? Was there still something more valuable on board? Could it have been the plans for the invasion of the United States of America? <laughs>